Well, welcome delegates to the IFLA World Council meeting. My name's James Hayter and I'm the IFLA president. This is the second time I've chaired an IFLA World Council meeting virtually. We did it last year as well. And I was really hoping this year that I'd be able to join you in Georgetown in Penang and that we could actually do what we love doing and that's seeing each other in person, renewing old friendships, making new friendships and really thanking all the delegates and all the contributors towards IFLA for the voluntary work they do for our um, federation. Sadly, we're not in person. We've got to put up with uh, another year of virtual meeting. What we learned from last year is a couple of things is one, we'll make the meeting shorter each day. So two and a half hours each day uh, for it. So I'm sorry we're not in person. I'd just love to be in, uh, in Penang with you, but it's, uh, it's not happening. So let me formally welcome delegates and observers representing the associations and um, friends of IFLA. I'd also like to welcome the important global bodies who represent and advocate for the landscape architecture profession globally. And I know um, with us at the meeting, there are representatives of CLAB and other organizations which are very much IFLA friends. Look, I'd like to also extend a special welcome to the association, the associations representing landscape architects in Malawi and in the United States. So we call them old friends and both those associations are now very much part of IFLA and are contributing towards the Federation. And I thank them for uh, joining us um, at this meeting. I'd like to put out a welcome to IFLA's past presidents. Uh, I know that Martha Fajajo is going to join us at this meeting and we have apologies from Catherine Moore and Diane Menzies would have said she would have loved to have joined but it is two o'clock in New Zealand and really difficult for her but we th uh, thank her and welcome uh, her as well. I'd also like to welcome three incoming regional presidents. So Graham Young from Africa, Monica Q from the Asia Pacific region, and uh, the new president from um, IFLA uh, Europe, which is to be ratified at their assembly coming up. But I'd like to welcome you three as incoming uh, regional presidents. I'd like to thank IFLA Exco, you IFLA member association delegates, IFLA committee chairs, IFLA working group chairs, the many members of these committees and working groups, and the literally, I think almost hundreds of others who are supporting the global federation in some way. Now, what I'll do is I'll um, look to share my screen now. For the World Council meeting, what we've done is we've adopted a theme of sharing globally for this World Council meeting. So as we share time together over the next two days, I hope this is just what we do. So we share ideas, we listen respectfully to each other and we strengthen our friendships. I'm so much looking forward to meeting in person with you next year in South Korea, where we can carry on the conversations that will start now as we will during the year. We always start our World Council meetings by acknowledging the contributions and the lives of those who are not with us now. And just three in particular, in Cornelia, Overlander, Goncala Tellers, and Kerstin Jorgensen, amongst others who have contributed so much to the IFLA 
family over years. Now, I won't ask for a minute silence in it, but I'll let you, as I continue on, uh, remember those three people at least and others who have been your friends and you know have contributed towards our profession. The theme of uh, sharing globally will continue as uh, we work through the World Council meeting with some just fantastic uh, presentations from uh, different uh, countries and different areas throughout the globe. I need to remind you of some protocols. So can you please rename your Zoom profile to the following format? So say your name and your organization. So for example, you'd say James Hayter, if the president. All participants will be muted by default during the meeting. Delegates of IFLA member associations formally participate in the meeting, but observers and others attending, they don't formally participate unless asked to by the meeting chair or presenter. And really that's just to keep control over the meeting. Can you please use the chat function in Zoom if you'd like to raise a question? And I really encourage you all the way through is to just use the chat uh, because it's a great way for you to have um, interaction with us. And can you please turn on your display video so we can see you? I, I really want to see you. I don't, uh, I don't like just seeing names. So if you can turn that on, I think then we know who's at the meeting. I really uh, like that and I encourage you to do that. If you go back to the founding of IFLA, which was 73 years ago, and this photo shows a group of middle-aged men and one lady sitting around a table at Jesus College in Oxford. And this was the start of the International Federation of uh, Landscape Architects. IFLA has really evolved since then. I've been involved in IFLA now for 21 years. And in that time, I've seen it evolve just immensely. And I think that evolution is about two things. One is that IFLA really is global now. It does represent all parts of the globe. 77 associations formerly belong to IFLA and it does go right throughout um, the globe. The second part of um, IFLA is that I really think in the last couple of years, it's become really quite inclusive. And I don't joke when I say that, I think there are literally hundreds of people in some way contributing towards the global profession. And I think that's just a fantastic uh, reflection on uh, what, um, what we can achieve as a federation. To just give you a little bit about how it was structured, it's structured by a World Council and you as delegates are members of the World Council. There's an executive committee and under the executive committee, there are four standing committees of education, professional practice, communications and finance. And under the committees, there are working groups and it's this structure, which we've been able to really put in place and concrete in place over the last couple of years, which I think is one of the reasons now for IFLA's success. The executive committee is made up by a treasurer and a president who are elected. There are five regional presidents and then uh, the IFLA treasurer and then the standing committee chairs. So you'll hear from all of these people during the course of this World Council meeting. Mostly, I have to say that sort of the rock behind IFLA and the person that's been a gel that's really uh, helped advance the Federation is IFLA's Executive Secretary, who I know you all know now, at least by email, and I know you are dying to meet in person. IFLA has working groups and what we've done is we've aligned the work of all the working groups with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, Global Action for People and Planet. And we've done this to show 
the landscape architecture profession's commitment to the goals which are outlined in the 17 SDGs. IFLA at a global level, it represents and participates globally. It connects and networks people and projects. It sets the high level of global policy, promotes advocacy and thought leadership, and it represents to government. And most importantly, it works with the IFLA regions and the associations in partnership. How can we be most effective? Three things. One, good governance. Secondly, working with partners. And thirdly, a real focus on what we can do best. Don't try to do everything, just focus on what we can do and be effective in. And finally, IFLA works under a business plan called Plan IFLA, and we're into our third year now of Plan IFLA. You can see on the left, our plan from last year, after the World Council meeting, we revised the plan. So on the right is our updated business plan. And um, what I want to do in this meeting at least is that the feedback that comes back from you as delegates will lead to a revision of that business plan. So we've done our best to try to reflect what the last World Council meeting has said. We've acted upon it in the committees and the working groups, but now we want to continually improve it. And I hope you'll be able to input into it um, within this World Council meeting. So welcome, it's great to be with you. I'm sorry we're not in person uh, next year. Let's look forward to uh, meeting in person then. So I'm gonna stop sharing now and uh, I'll take it back to Elam um, to put up a slide, which is relating to uh, the approval of the uh, World Council meeting. So the minutes have been on the IFLA website. Um, we've had some feedback to them, some amendments made um, to them. So I'd like to now raise the motion that the 2020 World Council meeting minutes are formally adopted. Now, this will be our first attempt at motions. So you'll see a poll's just come up. So can you please click in favour, against and abstain, and then push the submit button down the bottom once you've done that. So we'll just leave just a 30 seconds for you to do that. I'm assuming um, everybody's uh, looked at it. Kerry, thank you, Kerry. Uh, if, uh, Africa president has seconded the motion. So we'll do just another sort of 20 seconds. If you can push what you say and then uh, submit that please. All right, Sally, I think that's enough time to go on to the next item. Okay, thank you. So let's go on to the next item on the agenda, which is an introduction of delegates. As I said, what we're trying to do in this World Council meeting is to involve you more. And I'm sorry, it's hard to do in a short meeting and virtually, but this is one of the opportunities. I hope that you'll just say hello. If you can just give your name, and then um, if you can just give your name and your association and the country uh, that you are from. So we've got a list of the delegates. I'm absolutely uh, thrilled to say that there, I think there are 57 delegates attending this meeting, which is just fantastic. So let's go through in that order. You'll have to unmute yourself. So if the delegate from
from Morocco, and then after that, the delegate from Spain. If one of you is not there, we'll just pass on to um, the next delegate. So if you could do this really quickly, just your name, association where you come from, that would be really appreciated. So over, over to you now, delegate from Morocco, please. So move on to Spain. So delegate from Italy. Yes, hello, this is uh, Uta from Italy. Hi, uh, I should be in holiday now because this is our holiday month and I was planning to be in uh, uh, Malaysia. I'm so sorry for all the great work you have done and the planning and everything and you still had to renounce, but yeah. we'll, uh, we are sure we meet, meet again. Okay, um, thanks <laughs> Uda. The delegate from Australia, Chris, you there. Hi James, hi everyone. My name is uh, Chris, Chris Tidswell. Uh, I'm from the Australian Institute of Landscape Architects and I'm here in Sydney, Australia. Hello, Brilliant, everyone. Chris. Thank you. The right length. That was great. Thank you. So, Russia, my friends. I know you're there. I've seen you. Господин президент, я приветствую, во-первых, Всемирный совет вас и хочу поблагодарить вас за участие в нашем годовом мероприятии в котором вы приняли участие онлайн, и многие, многие издания и издательства цитировали отрывки из вашего онлайн выступления. Спасибо. Thank you, Chais. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, please translate. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for your help in our national uh, awards. Uh, uh, we have many. Uh, uh, mm. Uh, media uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yes uh, who cited your your speech uh, uh, for our our uh, public thank you very much and uh, thank you uh, uh, all the members yeah thank you so much и в этом году пройдет опять такое же громадное событие, которое имеет главную тему развития водно-зеленых каркасов городов России. И в этом году мы будем иметь еще один такой большой событий, который будет отдан к воде и зеленым structures of of uh, of these cities и мы будем видеть вас рады если позволит обстановка в наших в москве we will glad to see you in moscow yeah thank you all right thank you, thank you. Very thank, you. thank you so we're gone a bit quicker now just to our delegate from portugal hello I'm from Portugal. Hi, Paula. <laughs> Thank you. So great to see you. Thank you. Our delegate from the United States. Good morning, James, and good morning, everyone. This is Mark Folk. Uh, very pleased to represent the American Society of Landscape Architects, and I'm here in New York City. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Mark. Our delegate from Romania. Hello, I'm Yuna Tudora, representing the Romanian Landscape Architects Association. Thanks, Sayana. The delegate from Costa Rica. And we, we know Carlos, so he's he's hiding there somewhere. So the delegate from Germany. Yes, hello, I'm Fritz Aubeck. I'm the delegate of the Federal Chamber of German Architects, in which are about 8,000 landscape architects, and I am sitting in Munich. Germany. Thanks. Thanks, Fred. It's great to see you. The delegate from Switzerland. Yes. Hello, everybody. My name is Christian Toomey. 
I'm the delegate for the BSLA. I'm sitting in St. Moritz on 1,750 meters in a hotel room. Oh, Christian, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you. The delegate from Argentina. A delegate from China. Hello, everyone. Li Xiong Bear uh, from the <laughs> Chinese Society of Landscape Architecture. I'm very happy to meet with all your colleagues online. Please take good care of yourself during the epidemic period. Thank you. It's great to see you, uh, Mr. Bear. Glad to meet you. The delegate from yeah, the delegate from Canada. Delegate from Turkey. The delegate from Taiwan. Hello, uh, this is Sophia. Uh, so um, we rec I'm re represent uh, Taiwan, uh, Chinese Taiwan. So uh, it's good to see everyone. And I also have another coworker, Bai Qing, also on the line. Uh, Hi, thank everyone. You. Yeah, thank you. It's great to see you, thank you. The delegate from Slovenia. Hi. Greetings from Slovenia. My name is Urban Schwegel. Hello to everyone. Hi, nice to meet you. The delegate from Denmark. Hello everyone, I'm Elzelina von Mel. I represent Denmark and the Danish Landscape Architects Association. And I'm sitting on the island of Moon where I'm on vacation at the moment. Uh, you're competing with Christian for the best place to be. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> the, Very nice um, to meet you. Yeah. The um, delegate from Guatemala. The delegate from Hong Kong. The delegate from Chile. Okay. Delegate from Malaysia. Hi, hello everyone. I am Noor Atia and I'm now in Penang, Georgetown to welcome you for IFLA 2020 in Penang. <laughs> Thank you, Atia. It's great to see you. The delegate from South Africa. Delegate from Indonesia. Hello, everyone. Uh, James. Our Hi. delegate Reza uh, cannot join right now because she is with her mother at the hospital. So huh. I'm on behalf of uh, Indonesian Society of Landscape Architect uh, saying hello to everybody in this uh, meeting. Thank you. Dan, thanks very much for attending and give our best wishes, please. To the delegate from Iran. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Armin Rod. I'm a flatterer from Iran and I'm representing uh, Iranian Society of Landscape Professionals. Thank you. It's great to see you, Iman. The delegate from India. The delegate from Japan. Hello. <clears throat> hello everyone. My name is Misato Uehara. Uh, Japan Landscape Arctic Job Union. Nice to meet you. Thank you. It's good to meet you too. A delegate from South Korea. Hello. Uh, my name is Young Min Kim. Uh, actually, the president of uh, Korean Institute of Landscape Architecture, he's not here. So I'm on behalf of uh, Kyung Jin Cho. Thanks very much. It's great to see you. The delegate from Latvia. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Indra Purs, uh, representing Latvian Landscape Architects Association. And my welcomes from uh, Country Landscapes. Great to see you, Indra. Thanks for attending. Delegate from Botswana. Hi, everyone. My name is Huaba. I'm representing the Landscape Architects Association of Botswana all the way in Southern Africa. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The delegate of Kenya. Jambo to everyone. This is uh, Hitesh Mehta. Uh, I'm the Kenyan delegate and representing the Landscape Architects chapter 
of the Architectural Association of Kenya. Great to see you, Hitesh. <laughs> the delegate of Lithuania. Hello, colleagues. Uh, I'm Gintar Astavskis, uh, president and representative of the Lithuanian Association of Landscape Architects. Welcome to all of you from the Baltic Sea coast. Delegate of Lebanon. Hello, everyone. It's very good to see you. This is uh, Stella Wastopov, and I'm representing the Lebanese Landscape Association from Beirut. Thanks, Sawa. Thanks for attending. Delegate of the United Kingdom. Hello, James. Hi. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon from an unseasonably cool and cloudy afternoon here in Birmingham in the UK. I'm Jane Finlay, president of the Landscape Institute here, and I'm delighted to be able to join you this afternoon. Thank you. It's great to have you with us, Jane. Thanks so much. The delegate of Finland. Hello, everybody. Nice to see everybody around the world, new and old faces. I'm Anna Levonma, the delegate of the Finnish Association of Landscape Architects from Finland. Thanks, Anna. Where are you? In Lemba, at home. Ah, <laughs> uh, you've got a beautiful backdrop. It looks so good. Oh, thanks. I didn't really think of it. Kids yeah. playing in the background as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I can't hear him. That's all right. So, delegate of Malawi. Um, good afternoon. My name is Timothy Mahoney. I'm the delegate for the Malawi Institute of Landscape Architects. Um, unfortunately, I'm only at home. So, it's perfectly pleasant. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Timothy. And as I said, it's great to have Malawi back as a, well, you always were a member, but it's great to see you active in IFRA again. Thanks so much. Thank you. Delegate of Norway. Hello, everyone. Ingvar here, Mr. Ingvar Hegrenes uh, from Oslo. I'm currently in my home uh, office uh, due to COVID-19. I have some fond memories from 2019, both <laughs> from the city of Oslo and but mostly from the Norwegian Univers Life Science University, where we did have a beautiful last time great meeting. So I'm looking forward to the next year when we can see each other again, hopefully. Thank you so much. We have great memories too, Inga. So. <laughs> the delegate of the Netherlands. Yes, hello, my name is uh, John Boom. I'm representing the NVTL, the Dutch Association of Landscape Architects. I'm a, a new uh, delegate, but I, I was already involved in uh, 2008 uh, with the organization of the 45 World uh, Congress in Apeldoorn. So I know uh, a bit about uh, what IFLA is doing. And John, I think I can remember you from Apeldoorn, <laughs> and so it's great that you're in IFLA. Yeah. Thanks so yeah, much. We met there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The delegate from New Zealand. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Greetings from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, I'm Mike Barthelme, the NZILA delegate, and I'm speaking to you all from the future because it's half past midnight for me. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. The delegate from Austria. Delegate from Sweden. Hello, everyone from Sweden. Pia Johnson here representing uh, Architects Sweden, my, my third and my second online council, but I'm looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are too. It's great to see you. Thanks so much, Pia. Delegate from Serbia. Uh, hello, all. Uh, Andrea Tutuntic here from, from Serbia, from boiling Belgrade. And I <laughs> guess that's the reason why the camera is somehow not working. But it's anyway, it's great to see you even, even like that. You too, Andrea. Thanks so much. Uh, delegate from Colombia. A delegate from Bolivia. Delegate from Mexico. Hello, everybody. I'm Marta Rodriguez. I'm from Mexico. I'm representing the Landscape Architects um, as a society. And uh, it's good to be here and see you all. Thank you. Great to see you too, Marta. Delegate from Singapore. Hi, everyone. This is Ronnie here. I'm from Singapore. 
Good to see everybody here. I think Damien is here as well. Uh, we've got luxury of having two delegates here representing us. Uh, you're only allowed one, Ronnie. Great <laughs> to see you and great to see Damien. So, yeah. a delegate from Nigeria. Delegate from Sri Lanka. Delegate from Venezuela. And finally, just a delegate from Thailand. Okay, great. Sorry? Yeah, yeah great. Okay, thanks so much for bearing with that. It's just fantastic seeing you all. Um, I'd love it if we could uh, each speak for longer. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll continue on with it. So the next item on our agenda um, it's the President's report, so I'll go through this and again, what I'll do is I'll share the screen now. So my report will go for about um, 10 minutes, so just a little bit under that, but let me uh, share screen. Thanks very much. So. This is my president's report. So I've given a written report, which um, you'll find um, on um, on the website. Uh, so head of the feedback. So you'll find that. So let me go through my president's report. Please read the report that's on um, on uh, the website and in the papers. Just I just like to give by way of introduction, just a little about how IFLA operates and what, what I think is our success is a result of contribution of you, the delegates, which is supported by a strong resource secretariat and an organisational structure that takes advantage of new opportunities and change circumstances. And I, I mean this sincerely. I mean, with COVID, our world's completely changed. My practice as a landscape architect has completely changed. And we've adapted to it. And I think in the same way, IFLA has adapted. And in many ways, it's gone into a new form of, uh, of the organisation. So IFLA's partnership with our member associations and their involvement is the reason for our success. So we highly value the history and the body of work that's contributed by landscape architects globally to the practice and understanding of our profession. So how is IFLA defined or how do we want it to be defined? So our vision is as a thought leader. So it's about reaching out and connecting with the profession of landscape architects globally. And to do that, we've got a number of principles that we try to, um, to look to. So the principles are about being distinctive. So IFLA is the point of contact for the landscape architecture profession globally. It's globally connected and really importantly, it's progressive. It's a promoter of environmental resilience and sustainability. And we take this on as one of our core values. It's a thinker globally, but it acts locally. So you've heard before a bottom up organization that's what IFLA is. So it thinks globally, but it has to act locally. It's a promoter of the broad understanding of landscape architecture practice. In other words, it doesn't necessarily keep to the existing definitions and it's looking to advance the understanding of landscape architecture. It's about a promoter of strong, healthy and resilient communities. It's a supporter of infrastructure investment and green infrastructure, and it's a leader and a partner. So that's our ambition. That's the, you know, the goals and the principles we set ourselves to be. All of our member associations have a role to play. So you as delegates representing your, uh, your association are IFLA. So in our 2020 business plan, there were three key pillars on which we were building our reputation and effectiveness. And 
Those key pillars were excellent corporate governance, key services to members and raising the profile of the profession. And these are the measures against which we will be judged and against which we will judge ourselves. What are some of the highlights since the 2020 IFLA World Council meeting? So if we look at the three pillars in governance, so after a two year period of reform, IFLA has now achieved a stable organizational structure and strong financial accountability and resources. So some of the highlights are Plan IFLA is reported on monthly and updated annually. We're in a really strong financial position and we have a focus on IFLA at a global level where we can be effective. Our key services to members look at the services and projects of those that are valued and make a difference to the organisation. So it's recognition, practice of landscape architecture. So some of the highlights are communications and a new website. It's about a global focus. It's about doing what we do in partnership. So that's about membership of other global NGOs and really importantly, alignment to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And under our third pillar of raising the profile of the landscape architecture profession, IFLA operates happily in a working environment with differences in language, culture, and practice. So our aim is not to achieve a sameness of landscape architecture practice, but to celebrate the differences and to promote a deep understanding of our profession. Some of the highlights have been the International Labour Organisation definition of landscape architect, which our working group has been working on and it has a draft now. And it's about strong representation in IFLA, in Africa and the Americas. And I say that really sincerely is that if we want to be a global profession, we need global representation. And under some really strong leadership in both those regions, we, we can see that IFLA does cover now the globe. What are some of the highlights? A focus on activities, just on core areas. We don't try to be everything to everyone. The rules and expectations establishing for wearing the IFLA badge. So we work under rules. IFLA is not used by other people for their own, own purposes. To wear the IFLA badge, you have to follow rules and expectations. And I think they're well established now. We've strengthened our finances. We've done advocacy through Congresses and attendance at global events. We've introduced transparency in IFLA's operations. And we'll talk more about that later, but all of IFLA's files are now on Google Drive. They're available for everyone. All our finances are kept there. We're quite transparent now in the way we operate. There's been a review of IFLA's working groups with inclusive representation against all regions. We've aligned our working groups to the 17 SDGs. We've improved our relationships with all associations and regions. And, and that might sound easy, but sometimes, you know, we've got associations with quite different needs and expectations, but I think we've managed that. Continued improvement to IFLA's new website had monthly meetings of IFLA Exco with minuting and reporting of those meetings. And I don't think in the sort of two and a half years that this Exco has been in place that we've missed one. We've got improved relationships and contacts with other non-government organisations. We do a continual review of governance. We've improved filing and record keeping and the contractual arrangements with our executive secretary and the um, administration are in place with the performance reviews and contracts in place. I'd also like to say as a highlight in the last year has been the publication of a landscape architecture guide to the 17 sustainable development goals. Now this was done through um, one of our working groups, editor under the leadership of our 
previous professional practice chair marina and i think this um, is just indicative of how ifla has been and can be effective on a global scene so this guide and this is just one page from it looks at the 17 sustainable De development goals and takes examples from around the world of landscape architecture architects in practice and then publishes them against each of the sustainable development goals. Now, this is just hot off the press, um, but it's, I, I think it's just a fantastic uh, publication. And I thank uh, Marina and her, her group so much for doing it. And also for the contributions that were made by many in IFLA. This one's by Karen, um, the president of IFLA Europe. Um, and this is just a, a milestone that's just fantastic in terms of the advocacy for our profession. So what's IFLA planning over the next year? Accreditation and global education standards, professional recognition, sharing of professional expertise and thought leadership and professional standards and ethics. So the next 12 months, we'll see a global awards program in place, but we've changed our thinking with this and saying, if I doesn't need to run it ourselves, what we do need to do is to work in partnership with existing awards programs, which are in place. And we will talk more about that. It's a global program for educational program recognition, effective IFLA working groups in place with targets and reporting, increased projects and participation with other global bodies, increasing visibility and advocacy, and recommendations to the next World Council meeting on further reforms to governance and IFLA's organisation following extensive consultation with associations. The key lessons that we've learned Focus on the big picture, it's not the detail. Be a thought leader, bring new ideas to the table. Establish networks that bring people and ideas together. Advocate for values on which our profession is grounded. And you'll see that so much through this World Council meeting and through the Congress in terms of uh, climate action and work in partnership on all the tasks we do. So we set ourselves three years ago five global issues for landscape architecture that we've discussed at each of our World Council meetings. So climate action and health and well-being have been looked at at the last two meetings. Food security, community participation and Indigenous cultures are the three um, remaining. So the fifth one, Indigenous cultures, which is about respect of our local cultures as we respect our local environments. This is a group in Africa. And we've come up with a statement. So it's, it's really important. I'd just like to read it. So the world's indigenous people and their continuing knowledge and relationships with landscape is critical to the global issues landscape architects are concerned with. These are climate action, food security, local participation in design, and health and well-being. Local knowledge requires taking collaborative and collective responsibility for the curation and nurturing of the landscape towards a sustainable future. Finally, how do we translate this into our business plan? So Plan IFLA, the latest version, has key themes of governance, key services to members, raising the profile of the landscape architecture profession, promoting responsible and ethical thought leadership. The action plan structure has reporting in it and it's structured under business objectives, action and target dates. So please download, have a look at Plan IFLA to, within your papers for the World Council meeting. And then during this next two days, please use the chat room. If you've got the opportunity to speak, use that as well. And then give us your thoughts on how we can really make Plan IFLA reflect your thoughts as well. So I now I'll stop sharing. Um, 
it's great to see you all now on the on the screen. And then I'd like to introduce as the next report, the Finance and Business Planning Chair report, Jeremy Dennis. And I'll hand over to him to go um, through his report. When he's done that, then we'll open it up for any questions or discussions. Thanks, Jeremy. Okay. Um, well, I can't. I'll just share a screen if possible. Um, are we there? Um, well, I can't see myself, but that's probably okay. Um, hello, all. Um, well, this is another or one of these strange years where we are online. Um, so I hope you've all had the chance to read the material. Um, I'll run through some of the highlights, bearing in mind that we do have limited time and that we try to, to get through to the, the discussions and the questions. Um, so... Um, the treasurer's report is always one of these fun parts where you, where you all sit and, 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 and laugh, I think, perhaps. It is, well, to report on IFRS finances during 2020 financial year, and it's to present the coming budget uh, for the coming year. And we do also give an indication of the years to come also there. They're not, um, they're just indications. They're not uh, something that other than guidelines. Anyways, um, our financial situation during the 2020 financial year was um, actually quite good compared to that we were running through a, uh, a pandemic. We did not have any um, real expenses in, in travels. Um, we did have an online um, World Council that did run a bit over our, our estimated budget, but that was sort of dealt with seen in, in, in terms that we did not travel. So in, in, in terms of, of our financial situation, I'm quite happy to say that we're on a very good track. We're now um, up to 133,000 euros in, in, in our accounts, which is a very sort of secure and I would say stable situation as we've built on since James, you were treasurer we've more or less seen a, a linear movement. So I don't think we need to go much further in that direction, but it's, it's, it's good to be there. Um, I did put in the, the um, as you can see, the, the IFLA budget against the achieved result, as some of you always ask for this. This is, this is how it, what it looked like. Um, in, in terms of income, we more or less uh, met our expectations on, on membership fees. In sponsorship, um, we did have uh, a lack in that point, but um, that was mainly due to that we didn't target general sponsors in 2020. The year was too weird to do something like that. We'll get back to that um, on tra on in, in, in years to come. We do need to secure more funds from outside, just we can't live on fees alone. Um, as it was, there was no physical Congress, which means that we did not get any payment. Uh, it's delayed to this year. And unfortunately, I'm not in Penang either. I'm just sitting at home in Roskilde uh, and you can't even see, and that's in Denmark, by the way, uh, but you can't even see the weather outside, but it's gray. Um, then we have our awards, which um, we have um, sponsorship from Group Han and the, the Nava Palm and Gerson. Uh, they are also in for this year. You will see that later. And then we had um, income from, from advertising. Uh, that was the income part. On the expenditure, we um, did see that we did not really use anything on committees and projects. That, again, is down to the, uh, the tireless work from our working groups that they do these things online. Uh, they are all set up to do it. We, we as an exco do the same. We meet regularly and we do this online at a minimum cost. That uh, will probably, that should change in, in years to come. But for the result of this year, that's fantastic. When you see the work that has been done, I think you need to, to consider that, that the, the officers and, and all the working groups are more or less using their own time. 
Um, then, of course, we have the, the secretariat, which is mainly executive secretary, which is Sally, and, and a bit on an administrative aid. Um, we do also have the IFTA services, and the, the installment there was the final uh, financial installment regarding uh, Christine Bavasa, um, which was a shared um, executive secretary with IFTA Europe in some years ago by now, but we're now happy to say that this has all been resolved. Um, and then we have um, uh, officer expenditure. Again, this is a very low um, uh, expenditure seen towards earlier years, but again, we haven't been able to travel. Uh, then we have the, the awards and basically that's it. Um, we did plan for, for a large reserve and, and when you sort of look at it, we are we are actually doubling that this year. Um, so that's the budget against the achieved result for 2020. Um, I'll just run through uh, quickly uh, and go further on to the budget proposal for 2022. And as we always say, these are financial planning tools and we don't spend money that we don't have. So if things go weird then we change accordingly but the um the idea is is as you might have seen i'll just run over it in 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 overall terms is that you have uh, the expenditure here and we do tend to anticipate a rise in in our committees and project work that we actually allocate more funds for this we have the uh, the committees with a fifteen thousand euro uh, target and then we have special projects that could come arising from committees or regions. Uh, and then we have the prep database that we do wish to, uh, to maintain and keep as a, as a very, very uh, important information tool. Um, in, in the IFLA secretariat, we do have the uh, paying of Sally as an executive secretary. That's quite important. A new thing that we um, that we look into is we call it finance, and that's um, the appointing of a financial advisor. Um, the idea is that we do the same as, as they do in IFTA Europe to have someone to actually help us in the day to day running of the organization. It does seem a very good idea and it does seem to be a more um, professional way of, of doing things. Um, and we do have sort of, again, funding for administrative support, whether where we need it. Um, it could be financial audit or insurances. Um, then we are looking at the IFA services and we do tend to put, or we have allocated funds for updating the website. Um, and um, further on, we do also have here insurances and financial audits. So perhaps we should look at streamlining that in, in the coming year but we do go for a budget that is in, in balance so we can we can actually afford these things if we look further on to the officer expenditure we, we're just basically hoping that we can go back to a normal that means that we would have people traveling meeting networking and and all that and we are also planning on, on that the world councils do take up hosting world councils to take up more more money than we, we early anticipated. Um, again, we have the awards, this is Jeffrey Jellico Award, the IFTA student competition, and that basically sums up to about 150,000 uh, euros as expenditure. When we look into um, income, we do have our uh, membership. Uh, last year, we or oh, this year was actually the first year in running where we could, um, where we had the new fee structure. Uh, and with that, we also secure these monies. Um, further on, we, we do look at, at um, sponsorship where we do tend to look at a bit more conservatively. We, we don't necessarily think it's going to be easy to secure sponsors, but we also have the idea of investigation affiliate members or friends of IFLA, how you term it will be um, um, will, will be something we work on. Um, and then of course we have the IFLA World Congress in Korea. Uh, we hope that that will be a physical one and see you there. And 
then we have uh, student competition entry fees and something like that. They are more or less things that bear themselves. So that I think is the conclusion of, of the, uh, the report. Um, do we jump to that we go to the motion that um, we adopt the budget? James, is that how we do this? I think that's right. Uh, it, yeah. it is really hard on online to take questions. So if there are any questions, can you send them through on the chat room? And then we'll try to answer them um, if there are any questions um, in it. So perhaps, Jeremy, just leave it a half if a minute. If I just leave this here, then yeah. I can see on the chat that John, uh, John Boone of, of, uh, from the Netherlands, uh, is there a budget reserved for the upcoming anniversary of IFLA? Um, John, to be honest, uh, no, uh, we did not target a budget sum for that, but our working budget would be able to uh, accommodate that. So I think it's something we should look into, James, uh, and for the rest of the FBP group that we actually put in a sum for this if and, and discuss it. I think it's a fantastic idea. So we're at the 73rd year now, so it needs to be uh, planned ahead. So I think that's a, um, that's a great idea. So we, that we can add that to the budget, I think. Yeah. I can't see more questions. I get confused in, in some of the uh, notes. Jim Marie, I think that just be, should be a slight clarification that, um, just to note, uh, just for delegates, that in the um, that IFLA looks after a sum of money, which was a UNESCO grant to IFLA Africa. So I think, Kerry, that's around fourteen thousand um, euro, um, which is um, held, if you like, on trust for um, IFLA Africa. So that's separately accounted for in a separate bank account. Uh, but is included within IFLA's uh, um, accounting. Yeah, that, 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 does that answer Carrie's question? You think? I think, I think so. It was yeah. um, it was as as Kerry saying it was an award from UNESCO to support mm -hmm. um, the profession in Africa, which is just fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So I think Jeremy, probably there aren't any other questions. Um, Please just send them through if there are, but if there are any other questions, perhaps you might um, take the motion. Yeah, well, the motion is that the 2020 if the budget is to be adopted and that the report to be noted. So do and I could, get a second on that? Yeah, could get a second, please, yeah. And now, of course, you have the same as you had with, uh, with the um, minutes that we now tab in in favor against or abstentions i think we need a seconder <laughs> yeah can, can somebody just i, I, I second i second thank oh, you thanks, monica. monica thanks all right so now we can vote so again just about 30 seconds if you could do that be great Okay, Jeremy. Yeah, I don't know. The result will probably pop up at some point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but just to keep track of time and perhaps uh, see if we can get, get ahead. Um, the second report um, done by the FBP group uh, this year, we, we do not have so many as last year. That's fine. Oh dear. Um, that was the result is the FPP report on governance, uh, which is perhaps a working document in terms that, that these are ideas that we want to, to actually sort of um, pass, pass you as delegates, pass the World Council in terms of this is where we want to go. Um, we do need to look at our governance all the time just to make sure that we are uh, a contemporary business uh, or well, an, an NGO, we are a non-government organization, but we do tend to look, we do need to look into 
that our organization is, is slim and that we need that we do things that are needed for sort of value for members that's the most important thing that we can do um where is ah there we are um a lot of the things that we have done um, er, earlier, I think, James, you put it in uh, in your report, was the, the whole plan IFLA part. Um, uh, it, the document is there. Uh, I do I have the camera here. I printed it. I read it. But that's one of our most key documents in, in terms of that's our business plan. Um, we, do, we have put in place uh, the sort of rigorous accountable financial management. Um, and report to the executive committee every month. Um, and we've also clarified the organizations, organizational structure of IFLA. You saw that in James's slides. Um, and again, the reorganization of the working groups in alignment of, uh, of the whole uh, sustainable development goals. All that was ideas and, and thoughts from a workshop in, in Oslo have been implemented. And I think that's a very, very good focus. Um, what we we'll look into in the next year would be a review of the, the IFLA bylaws and rules of procedure, um, which is also said that will be presented at the World Council in 2022. Um, we would like to introduce an operational manual um, as a sort of working tool on our day-to-day -day operations to, again, to make ourselves a bit more easy to, to run. Um, and as said in the, uh, in the report on finances, we would love to appoint a financial administrator in terms of making our day-to-day -day, uh, transactions um, even better and assist the treasurer and the executive secretary in any ways they can. It's not a full-time position. It's just uh, more or less, what would you say about 15, 20 hours per month. Um, so these are actually sort of the key elements, and I do think that this is about the time where we open up, um, go one back, and perhaps take some comments or questions here on what you think um, this could be. I know it's a difficult one when we're sitting uh, all over the world, and I would have loved to do this more or less in a workshop format in Penang, but not possible. So really, any any comments either just in the chat or um, if anyone like to put their hand up to speak. Okay, so I think the comments that have come through. Oh, sorry, Fritz. Sorry, I didn't see your hand up. Yes, Fritz. Just yes, you need to... yes. Uh, my, my question to uh, Jeremy is: uh, What do, uh, do you think about the financial administrator? Is it a, a, a volunteer job, or is he uh, is he uh, um, like like Sally? Uh, is he? Uh, s s I think, it, I think or, or it's what, is it a professional from uh, some company or what do you think about? I think it's someone that has sort of the, more or less the same competences as, as, as your um, as your financial administrator in Europe, uh, which is someone mm -hmm. who's actually got sort of financial knowledge and, and, and can actually sort of do day to day mm -hmm. reporting and, and stuff like that. So it, it, it is sort of a professional, but not um, uh, well employed more or less on, uh, as, uh, uh, on a contract, which means that we can sort of terminate the contract. And I think, you. Jeremy, you were looking at allocating in the, the budget a sum of up to how much? Uh, I think it was a, a maximum of 5,000 euros. Yeah, so um, just, just yeah. a small amount for it. Yeah. Exactly. Karen is saying Andre Colen is paid for his service, financial administration, and that sort of is that. We pay for the service we get. So there's, we do not have a large operation. I think we do have about, what, 80 to 100 uh, transactions a year in our accounts in total. That's less than a normal household. I think you should bear that in mind. Um, Mark, uh, James, Mark had a question. 
Um, where did it go? Did you see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the operational um, manual. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the, if I can then perhaps start, and Jeremy, you, you help, but the idea of the operational manual is that um, IFLA does a lot of things day to day. Um, and as I said, one of the successes of IFLA has been to actually try to outline what the rules are that we operate under. So the intent of the um, operational manual is not to uh, duplicate the constitutional bylaws, but it's actually to provide more, um, more help and direction for the everyday operations of IFLA still within the IFLA constitution. Yeah. In terms of the bylaws, so, um, there is duplication between the constitution and the bylaws. Um, they both handle some similar topics and really it's to try to clean up the bylaws so they're consistent more with the constitution. Uh, they're a little bit out of kilter with uh, some things. One of the issues, for example, we had during the year was that um, the feedback from Karen and um, IFLA Europe was that IFLA has a category of membership called corporate, uh, but corporate, the word corporate means different things to different people and was causing some issues in um, particularly in Europe with the use of the word corporate. Mm -hmm. So that's actually in our bylaws at the moment and we'd look to perhaps question whether that's the right word and if affiliate or another word is actually better for it. So it's to clean up some of those things. I should say that the IFLA bylaws and constitution hasn't been changed in 15 years and we fully support that, that you don't want to be changing your constitution too often. Um, however, the bylaws I think do need some kind of attention. Yeah. All right, so let's take a vote on that, Jeremy. I think we... Oh, I just oh, motion, need... yep. The recommendation is that the report to be noted. So we have a Do seconder. Have a seconder. Second. Thank you. And Thank then you, you have the 30 seconds to do in favour, yep. against or abstain. Yep. Um, yeah. Do we know who was the seconder? That was uh, Andrea Tsusundic okay. of Serbia. Thank, Thank you, Andrea. Thanks, Andrea. Yeah, also Vincent was there, but also okay. Vincent, okay. yes. <laughs> and yeah, Vincent was also there. So when we wait for that result, I think that's my final slide. This is from where I work. We've now stopped. This is second year that we stopped cutting our lawns, and now it's basically down to biodiversity, flowers, and everything emerging. We love that. Um, so thank you all. Thank you, FPP, for your tireless work uh, this season. Special thanks to you, Carrie. I will miss you, um, but you send a, a great substitute also. So, yep. Thanks very much, Jeremy. That's great. I don't know in the program. I think I'm either opting, I think I should introduce either a video or a break. So I think. <laughs> I, let, <laughs> I let me, Jeremy, let yeah, me do thank it. You. <laughs> yep, Hank, that's I fine. We, we have a, a quite a dynamic um, agenda going here, so you did really well. Thanks very much. Look, what, one of the things we're doing in this World Council meeting is that we, um, we want to um, show the sort of the global reach and inclusion of IFLA. And what we've done is we've asked various people around the, um, the globe to prepare a short, really short video on what landscape means to me. And you'll find these absolutely fascinating. So the first one is from Kenya. So let's, um, let's play that now. Hey, Yang, that's over to you now to play it. Thanks. My name is Angos Sironka Oletinina. 
I'm a guest relations manager and a senior guide in the, and at camp, base camp Masai Mara. Good ecotourism really works because um, the local people get to have better living standards. For example, there are so many needs here. We have health care, we have education that are very, very crucial in our daily lives at the moment. And uh, as, as I speak now, we have quite a couple of uh, girls that are going to school. This is the first number of girls going through uh, primary school successfully without dropping out because of unwanted pregnancies or and uh, uh, early marriages that are, you know, that are given out when they are still very young. This is education way of, uh, of life that Bescom is uplifting the local community. We also have the local clinic here that we're cooperating uh, with them to bring awareness of, you know, good health. For example, clean water. There's so many waterborne diseases that are being reduced now because of water that we're providing as Bescom to the community. We have HIV and AIDS program to bring awareness to the, to the local people. They don't know anything about it. This is something that I feel and strongly believe that um, I should, you know, everyone should try to, to, to do. My name is Anthony Tira. I'm working as a guide and as a, I have a camp here in the Mara. For now we are <coughs> at Sand River. We just watching the wildebeest uh, coming from Tanzania, which is quite great today. This day was great, and we had uh, four cheetahs there. Uh, the great migration is just entering the Mara right now. My name is Dennis Ringa. I'm from Mara, and I live in Kenya. Okay. Planning to do a course in, in regards of law. Tell us about how you started with this program of Maasai Mentorship. I started the program when I was nine years in class. I want to give a message to the young people of Kenya that uh, vultures are very important birds. Vultures are important in many ways. One, they significantly tell us how now to conserve the environment by eating carcasses, consuming carcasses that could have caused very dangerous germs that could lead to hostile diseases and when you see these birds flying even the Maasai themselves knows so vultures are really important we need to conserve them to our level best Oh, I think that was so fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's just so good. I'd just like to thank um, Rian Yamazaki and um, Pei Yang and Hitesh who uh, put that together. I think that's just uh, so sort of humbling watching that. <laughs> it's so great. Now, what we'd like to do is, if we can, I just want to have a break. So instead of a 10 minute break, we'll just have a five minute break. Uh, we're just a little bit behind time in it. So what we'll do is um, if we just, thanks very much. That's really quick and uh, fast, so well done. So we'll just have a five minute break and then um, come back. And then the first report for the second half of the first day will be Monica's report 